Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on oscilloscope impedance and ultrasonic measurements. We'll start off by looking at the front panel of a standard oscilloscope. If we look carefully by the input channels, we can see the oscilloscope impedance on this model is clearly listed as 50 ohms. In fact, there are often two options available, high impedance, which is 1 mega ohm or 10 mega ohms, and 50 ohms impedance. Or even basic or old oscilloscopes will support the 1 mega ohm or 10 mega ohm high impedance option, whereas it tends to be only more modern, fully featured devices that will allow you to switch between high impedance and 50 ohm impedance. We'll start with an example of how we might need to take consideration of the impedance options. We'll start off by looking at the output of a function generator. We'll connect that with a cable to our oscilloscope. If we consider the equivalent circuit of this, our function generator is outputting via a source impedance of 50 ohms. We've deliberately chosen a 50 ohm cable. Be careful you don't use a 75 ohm cable. These are also common in CCTV and ethernet applications. And we're going into the input of our oscilloscope. At this point, we need to choose an impedance. Given we have a 50 ohm system matched from source through cable to load, we should be choosing 50 ohm in this case. Now let's look at another example where we'd like to monitor the transducer drive level. In this case, we have our same function generator, at this time a transducer, and you can see the 50 ohm BNC cable is configured to it. We also have an oscilloscope, and it would be logical to assume that we can simply put a T-piece connecting to the transducer and another cable connecting to the oscilloscope. But let's look carefully at the equivalent circuit for this. Yes, we have a function generator with a 50 ohm source, and that connects via a 50 ohm cable to a transducer. Nicely loaded system, no problem so far. However, when we use the T-piece and connect another 50 ohm to it, you can see in this situation, we've actually got two 50 ohms in parallel. The net effect of that is to give us 25 ohms. And at this point, we're effectively loading the scope transducer combination onto a transmission line in a mismatched format. In this case, we would get a reflection occurring at this interface. And in fact, we would end up seeing not all of our signal developed across either transducer or scope. The preferred way of solving this problem is to ensure that we use a high impedance on the scope. This way, you have 50 ohms in parallel with one mega ohm, which is very nearly 50 ohm impedance. So the correct solution to this measurement problem would be to take our function generator, our transducer, our oscilloscope, and T-piece all as before, but this time we will use a scope probe to connect in. These are devices that have very high impedance and are matched to that of the oscilloscope. In fact, most modern scopes should even auto-select by recognizing from the guard pin on the scope probe that you've actually got a scope probe attached. What happens if you've only got access to high impedance? As we have on this oscilloscope, and here you can see it's one mega ohms in parallel with 16 gigafarads. Well, in this case, we could use a 50 ohm through terminator. You could also use a T-piece in combination with a 50 ohm load. And when those two are placed together, you would have the net, same net effect as the 50 ohm through terminator. You can then have a correctly terminated line so the line from the transducer via the cable to the load is fully matched to 50 ohms, and yet the input to the oscilloscope is able to operate quite correctly at one mega ohm. So let's have a look at how all of this fits together when we're making hydrophone measurements. If we have a membrane or needle hydrophone which incorporate a preamplifier, then these have 50 ohm outputs. Because they're buffered, we can use a 50 ohm cable to connect to our oscilloscope, which must also always use 50 ohm impedance. If we have an unbuffered hydrophone system that doesn't incorporate a preamplifier, something like an older style Marconi membrane hydrophone, a piston hydrophone, 
or one of the ball or cylinder hydrophones that are common in underwater acoustics. These have their sensitivity determined end of cable, so must be connected directly to an oscilloscope, which is using the one mega ohm input impedance. If you put any additional length of cable between hydrophone and oscilloscope, cable loading corrections must be applied. In this case, it's recommended you contact Precision Acoustics technical team for further information on this. So to summarize, if scope is the end of a 50 ohm transmission line, then you must use 50 ohm impedance to ensure that you have a matched impedance. If the oscilloscope monitors another device or is part of an unmatched line that's using an unbuffered hydrophone, you must use one mega ohm impedance. We hope you found this interesting. If you did, come back and find some more of the Precision Acoustics tutorial videos.